This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Yeah. Suck it, nerd. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Uh. Live with me, daddy ass. Welcome to nerd school. Okay, yeah, I, I am fucking swamped at work, so uh, we'll have to make this quick. And you're clearly in your car on your lunch break. <laughs> uh, no, I'm at work. It's just so cra- I work in a co-working space, and so all the little rooms for calls have been taken. So I came yeah. to my car. So, yeah. It is. All right this thing so so we'll okay. burn through spider-man homecoming yeah the rest of it and then oh, i just dear. want to know to listeners this is this is what we do for you okay it is mm-hmm. winter and i'm in my car taking this call because we want to talk about this with you guys. because we well, want our listeners to hear us talk about spider-man homecoming and, yes yep and all the more incentive for them to like and follow and subscribe also yeah. send us some money or follow us on patreon so we can all retire and just do this all day. Yeah. Do we have a Patreon? Uh, you set up my one. You did. Joe, <laughs> we, not with you. <laughs> I think yeah. we got one, but I don't even know how to get on there. I'll have to get back on oh, there and God. figure out how okay, to do it. Okay, guys. <laughs> Good job, it, it, that could be like a million dollars sitting there waiting for us. And send us yeah. no money. extra credit. Just send us money on PayPal <laughs> at History for Jerks. I think it's the name. Do you even have that as there's a, a I know I have a cash app at J E A U X <laughs> Hunsaker. That send me money. And I promise I'll share it with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. You're probably more likely to get a shared account if you send it to me. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Through TBJ. Yeah, we'll get a Patreon going at some point. But let's get some subscribers and listeners and followers first. Yeah. So do all that. And what you know, one thing I forgot to mention. In the Spider-Man Homecoming, not to jump right in, but we're all in crunch time on our lunch breaks here. Uh, there are two people in this movie that I have met personally, uh, and oh. I didn't mention it. So it's a flex. You You're forgot a flex. to flex. mention two best friends. Two more it's best a flex. Two now. best friends that I am. I mean, I actually and you know them. You know them by name, not <laughs> that one person or that know, one guy. Don Cheeto. No, no, he knows. Yeah, one it? of these I have their cell phone number uh, in my phone. Uh, do you guys know who the two are? They're both comedians. Martin Starr. <laughs> no, I wish I uh, Hannibal Burris. Hannibal J. Burris. Smooth. Hannibal yeah. Burris. Yes. Yeah, he texted me uh, and was pissed that I wouldn't buy him chicken wings, uh, and he texted me a a smiley face, just straight on, like a face like that. Because I texted him and said, "Oh, the settlement's all ready when you're ready." He's like, "Oh yeah, can I get some chicken wings?" I was like, "Oh, yeah." Then I ordered him. I was okay. New settlement with the chicken wings added. And he's just like, not happy face. You were supposed to talk him chicken chicken wings. Yeah, he was like, I I sell out a show. I sell out a thousand seats and you can't buy me some chicken wings. And I'm like, that was a Joe fail. We're sorry. Sorry, sorry, Hannibal Burris. I should have bought you chicken wings back in whenever it was. He was there. And then the, the other one is another comedian, Martha Kelly. Who is the tour guide uh, in the okay. elevator? Or Martha Kelly? Yeah. From off of uh, Baskets? Baskets, yes. She's a funny comedian. She does that dry comedy. Like, she always has that flat affect and does stand-up comedy. So, I just want to get those flexes out of the way that I have two connections. You personally, you personally know two more yeah. people. Yeah. And, Mar- and uh, Martha Kelly's character... Uh, Turns out to be the Spider Queen in comic books. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Liar. Oh my god! That just made my day. Good job. That didn't make my day. Ah, uh, your day is that ruined. Was, that was the point. We he wasn't trying to make the day. Ruiner. <laughs> Ruiner. <laughs> so back to the movie where we left off. Do you guys remember where we left off? I think. We're uh, back right to after the Washington Monument. Yeah, right after that whole thing, right? Uh, right. The elevator is going to plummet. Returning to New York City, Parker persuades Davis to reveal Toombs' whereabouts. Oh, because he goes and confronts uh, Don Glover. 
Donald Glover, who I wish I knew. Aaron Davis. Uh, Aaron Davis. Uh, we talked I about. I wish I knew Donald too. Yeah. Is yeah, uh, the Prowler, and we do cover Donald Glover being in the running for Spider Man, which was kind of the impetus for creating Miles Morales in the first place. Uh, okay. Back in the day when yeah, they were, the Prowler. He's I think the it was Prowler. before the Andrew Garfield Spider Man's when they're like doing the first reboot after Tobey Maguire's three Spider Man movies. They're like, uh, for some reason, they're all right. We're we're gonna reboot Spider Man. Everyone, uh, there was a huge camp, like a social media thing going. Donald Glover should do it because he was real big in the uh, community at the time, I believe. And he loves, like, isn't that the thing you said? He loves Spider Man. Like he's a big Spider Man fan or a big Marvel fan. I, or I mean, I think so. I mean, I remember like there was a lot of, and there was like a big thing. Oh, Donald Glover should be Spider Man. And then there, of course, there's the shitty white nerds backlashing yeah, against that idea. Out. And I remember it, like there was a quote of him saying like, uh, like she should be a white guy because uh, that's uh, he they, we identify more with him or something like that. And it's like, you don't think there's a black kid in Queens somewhere that's really into like photography and science? You don't think that no, could Andy, be possibly no a thing? No, there's no black kids yeah. anywhere into anything. Duh, yeah, Andy. that's what Why he was saying. Why would black kids be in STEM? Yeah, exactly. So... It was, and I think a lot of that was open some Marvel creators' brains and saying, let's see what we can do about getting a black Spider Man up in here. Because it yeah. became a thing where, like, a lot of white nerds would go, well, just make your own characters, make new characters that are, don't turn the, the established characters. Our beloved white honkies. Yeah. <laughs> and, but uh, th- then I think the idea was, uh, they're like those established names um it was sort of like giving uh access to uh, the big franchise names rather than having to build from scratch a new character with a and try to to mm. get this character into the zeitgeist people know spider-man people know so you know. while we're, while we're talking about this spider-verse thing <clears throat> the into the miles morales and all that who are all the who's like that like there's that pig spider I ham re, i gotta rewatch it that's like from peter a, porker spider ham and that's like a that's like actual a, comics comedy comics like they do sometimes would like do parody, parody like of, a weird owl that's like weird owl for music they do parody comics. sort of yeah it was like a i think a more i don't know kind of kid geared like oh we'll, we'll have some a lot of fun and everybody in the except the marvel universe except everybody's an animal there's you know like spider ham uh, instead of Spider Man, and then uh, like okay. the Muppets when they made them babies. You know, yeah, 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 them. yeah, 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 baby. Similar concept. The and Muppet then there was baby, a, yeah. you know, I think I talked about it this last time. There was a a parody comic, uh, like a satire of their Marvel did like Stanley and Jack Kirby and everybody did sat- sat- satirically lampooned their own work with a, a comic series called Not Brand. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, Brand X was the thing. I think Brand X is what they used to call DC Comics in the Marvel Comics letters, letter pages, but uh, they had, a, like, a few runs of just making fun of their own stuff because they had senses of humor. Okay, and who are the other, like, I guess there's multiple spiders in the Spider-Verse. Oh, there's a million. But they there's just, like, they, they've done that... a whole thing recently in the last, you know, five years or so about the spider verse and and this uh, writer dan slot who i've met who was on my uh first oh, podcast there we go um we right. talked to him for... likes, andy. drop Live the names name, yeah. dropper. name dropper andy i had a podcast called the book report uh back like 10 years ago can you still find those episodes online somewhere probably not because that whole site kind of went down but uh I, i'm sure I the could, internet i have the recording somewhere, somewhere. like oh you do yeah but uh, I, I might need to see if I can start uploading those. Dust those off. We'll put them uh, on the History for Jerks website under archives or some shit. Yeah, maybe. Um, but he did this thing about like across the Spider-Verse or something like that, where he was determined to use every version of Spider-Man that's ever been anywhere. Okay. Like, because they do alternate universe stories all the time. So he's like, all right, I'm going to get every alternate universe Spider-Man we've ever seen. So, but it's not, so it's not just Spider-Man that has a ver- like a verse like that you could do this with. Like, so there's a, is there a million versions of say, you know, Thor, Black Panther, 
I mean, technically Angel, there could be. Whoever. There's not as many stories told uh, about them as Spider. Like Spider Man is one of the most popular characters, just because he's like, so popular and everybody. Yeah, like that. gotcha. So but Superman, there's probably yeah. a million Supermans, right? Batman's. Oh, you know, yeah. there's a DC million. DC is a whole other thing with their multiverse. They, uh, they create. That's yeah. There was. It's way too complicated to go into. TBJ is a Batman. Yeah. <laughs> and in I theory. Am, but you're not supposed to tell the whole world my oh, secret. Though. Oops. Crap. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, I think yeah. you don't need that, Joe. I'll cut this out. Don't test. So in, in theory, there's an infinite number of possible permutations of Spider-Man or every Marvel universe. Like, there's an infinite alternate timelines. Okay, and, so we get that little bit with Donald Glover when his hand stuck to the car. That's hilarious. And Donald yeah. Glover's great. He's like, man, you got to get better at this part of the job. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, and then he confronts Tombs and his associates at the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, and Parker captures the group's new buyer, Mac Gargan, who is, you guys, I think, already explained this. He's going to be Scorpion, or he yeah. is Scorpion, right? Yes. Although he was also briefly Venom for a while in the comics. Oh, Matt Gorgon but was? Matt Gorgon was Gargan? originally the Scorpion. He was Scorpion most of his uh, uh, life or existence, but there was a period of time where he had the Venom symbiote, and then he was posing as Spider-Man in a group called the Dark Avengers, Whoa. which was a secret Avengers organized by Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. I want to uh, re- read that. You should. Is it good, Art Star? You read oh, it. Oh, it's great. You should read. You should read all the Spider stuff. You have, and it might take you a while, but you should read it. It should be on. Uh, do you have them, Do you have them in your in your apartment? And have they been flagged in the toilet? Have they been oh flagged in the toilet? <laughs> no, he uh, doesn't take them to the toilet. So that's he's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so he says. Uh, all right, but uh, he botches an FBI operation, which. He didn't know he was, you know, this is why he shouldn't be getting into this stuff, right? He botched this FBI, FBI operation, which was it's attempting to arrest Although I will say, he is a kid. He is a kid. And if, I can't remember the exact conversation, but if Tony Stark had said, all right, I will follow up on this, as opposed to just telling him not to get involved. Yeah, right. Valid. That's Tony Stark Valid. not Valid. understanding how teenagers work. Uh, get a, don't do this. Get out of this. If he said, I'll take care of it, I think that would have solved a, maybe a lot of problems. But Spider Man didn't know it. anyone was following that. up on this. Peter Parker was like, and he, yeah, but that's, that's let also it Tony doing what Tony does too, though, right? Like, Tony likes to take control of the situation and not have anyone else's help for the most yeah. part. So, yeah, like, this is Tony Stark yeah. trying to be a father figure and not hitting all the buttons. So I found myself, so I just, I just rewatched it again this weekend while I was kind of homesick a little bit. And so, uh, I, I found myself wa- strangely wanting Peter not to do this hero stuff and just be a kid. Like when he made the decision to leave the party after he saw the blue explosion, I was like, no, 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 just go to the party and be Spider-Man and say, yeah, I know Peter. And I know, uh, what's his buddy's name ned i know ned ned's cool and peter's cool and like get the street cred get the girl be a high school kid just ignore all that i wanted him to do all that and then at the end when he chooses to go back to high school and not be the hero i wanted the opposite at that point i was like no now be the hero so he did the opposite things that i wanted him to do like i wanted him to be the cool kid in high school uh, and use spider-man just to be cool like which is all (laughs) they wanted him to do they said just go no, stay out of this. Go be cool. Uh, yeah, but he had a, a sense of responsibility. Yeah. You know, that's like if great he's power. A hero. Like he says in Civil great War, power. like they kind of rephrased it was if if you can do the things I do, I can do, and you don't, and then the bad things happen, they kind of happen because of you. Okay. Which, Which is, is the, his whole. It's just the, the rephrasing. You fight so hard. Yeah. yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. That's right. And, and touche. You ladies and are smart. And it's also uh, a sort of twist on the origin story of, you know, when he first got the spider powers in the comics, he was like, how can I make money off of this? I'm broke all the time. Let's get some money. He goes exactly. and becomes a professional wrestler, fights Randy Macho Man That's Savage and all that. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, then when he gets stiffed from that money, he lets that criminal He's go like, by that yep. robs the guy that stiffed him. He's like, fuck you. 
and then that guy goes and kills his uncle Ben. So I just realized yeah. we don't have we don't get the <clears throat> the whole spider biting origin story in this version of Spider Man, right? We don't see no Pope, it's it's uh, it's already happened by the time we meet him. It's like yeah. six months after he's had it when we met and him. We've already Civil done War. it enough with Andrew Garfield and Toby. Yeah, I think I yeah. read that they didn't want they didn't want it to be like this iteration of Spider Man to be yeah an origin story. The same exact right. no, we had enough origins for for him yeah this yeah we, we, we all know that already and know? they're not changing as anything a, drastically this is how he exists in the world as a teen with these powers and trying to fit in with his teen group and trying to be an avenger at the same time we we're watching that part of his life well tbj as the resident lady do you like how they bring zendaya in slowly as kind of a nerdy outcast that's always taking the piss out of him uh, I like that part. That's um, you know, that's protester, kind of protesting that's is patriotic. My kind of, patriotic. My kind of character, yes. Yeah. But I will note, Joe, because you were a little sexist. You don't have to be a lady to appreciate the guy's presence <laughs> in the movies and there. So. You don't have to be a lady. Uh, what did you say? You don't have to be a lady to appreciate Zendaya. Appreciate her presence oh, in the yeah. movie and what her character is like. Well, I mean, you're the only one who can speak for all women. We can't. <laughs> yeah, sure. I put on a hat. No, I cannot speak for all women. I can speak for TBJ and only TBJ. But I do know that plenty of people did appreciate Zendaya. Well, Art Star, do you want to speak for all badasses? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure decline. TBJ could speak I, for all badasses. I decline. <laughs> That's Thanks, true. Andy. And you said that is true. And you saying are I you can't? saying Art Star can't jump off the top rope and do a flying elbow? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you went to Art Star to speak for all badasses uh, without recognizing that TBJ could also well, speak for TV, all badasses. TBJ is exactly. the best. And yet, well, TBJ and Art Star well, cannot speak for each was, other because they're warring he was Sith Lords. The... Wait, you just called TBJ a Sith Lord? I'm well, not a Sith Lord. The, I, I was short it. I'm, it's a warring Sith Lord and a Jedi. Yeah. Did we lose Art Star? No. Okay, I uh, thought you he's got just to, waiting for us to stop like talking. Say, no, yeah. he, recognized, <laughs> he recognized the truth when he heard it, and then he oh, wow. okay, wow. Uh, I'm sorry, you can absolutely jump off the top rope and deliver a flying elbow and speak for badasses, but not for badasses everywhere. That's yeah. It. Okay, so tombs avoids Parker's attempts to shut down a malfunctioning weapon. Uh, cause it to overload and tear the ferry in half. That whole exciting scene where the, the guns start shooting everywhere and it cuts the ferry in half. And Stark, who had arranged for the FBI to apprehend Tombs, helps Parker save the passengers when he, you know, he does the webs everywhere. And he's like, "Oh my God, what am I gonna do?" And you see him struggling, just like screaming, "Ah, what's gonna happen?" And then Tony Stark comes and saves the day. Um, yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, I yeah, love that. Iron Man. Yeah, that guy. That was great. Yeah, he's funny. He starts clapping. I love that guy. Because that's us, right? That's the nerd school. Right. That, that could have been the nerd school podcast yelling that. And I'm like, hey. We were there, yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, I love that that guy. And then that reminds me too of that part. And this guy, I think, is a famous comedian or YouTuber who's like when he's doing his webs up in the air, I was like, hey, you're that spider guy. He's like, Yeah, call me Spider Man. Okay, Spider Man. Do a flip, <laughs> and he does a flip. Uh, but that guy, I think, is somebody somewhere in, from something. <laughs> do a flip, <laughs> yeah, do a flip, and he does it. Uh, anyway, afterwards, Stark admonishes him for his reckless recklessness, reminding him that he almost killed dozens of people as well as himself. And deciding Parker can no longer be trusted, he demands the suit back, and that's when he tells him, "If you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't have the suit." And Peter's upset. Which is big coming from Tony because Lord, he had to learn that lesson. Yeah, yeah right. But you know, he's uh if, if you're not a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist of without course. the suit. Well, doesn't he doesn't he even say like, oh, I sound like my father, or I sound like, you know, it sounds familiar or something like that? Didn't he say Probably, that? Probably, yeah. Something As he's like giving the speech. Um. So. Peter's going to try to concentrate on his personal life. To that end, he makes a date with Liz and arranges to take her to the upcoming homecoming dance. And she already knew he likes her. Like, he's like, I like you. Yeah, I know. You're not very good at keeping secrets. He's like, oh, yeah, you wish. You don't know. You don't know <laughs> the real secret I keep. 
um, I hear the, the secrets, secrets that, that you keep, keep when you're right around in your sleep. Anyway, that girl is. Don't you think she's out of his league? Like she wouldn't in real life. She wouldn't want to date him. Uh, uh, although no, I all the women love that guy. That. Yeah. What's no, his name? Tom. I, think, Tom I think we tell you all the time that what men think the female gaze is is very inaccurate from what the actual female gaze is. Yeah, we can't. We don't and, know. To, we can't see it. <laughs> no, you don't. That's why we're it, not very smart. You guys misconstrue it all the time. <laughs> no, that's true. But yeah, uh, t- and I think part of what makes <laughs> Tom Holland speaking of the female gaze, I guess. Is that fucking lip sync battle he did to Rihanna when? Uh, uh, oh my God! It was the best. Yeah. Listen, what was? What is? If this? you have not seen this, it's the, the lip sync so, battle between Zendaya and Tom Holland. I think in promotion of this movie. Oh wait, they're dating. The they're one. actually together, aren't they? they are. Yeah, but I think this is before that. They Zendaya comes out and does a pitch perfect Bruno Mars, uh, twenty four karat. Yeah. Uh, who do, who does that? Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya, Zendaya does? Yeah, like full costume and everything. And he in, comes in, out. But, and, uh, but he comes out and does Rihanna. a little singing in the rain dance in a suit. And then he goes behind a bunch of umbrellas, umbrella from Rihanna yeah. Starch. And then he comes out and he's in full uh, uh, sexy he's drag. So good. And he, so good. he sells yes, it. He commits to it. it. Is this on uh, Jimmy Fallon yeah. or something? Uh, well, they had a lip sync battle. No, it this was... was when LL Cool J hosted yeah. this show. Oh, so it is. started it off as a Jimmy Fallon bit, turned into a TV show with LL Cool J and Chrissy Teigen. And celebrities would go on all the time and they'd do like three rounds to battle. But Andy's right. They were prepping to, they were publicity for the movie. And so they went on. And this is pre coupled them. Um, but I think you can tell when Zendaya was, goes. So holy cool. shit i'm into this guy and it's, as soon as he comes out in that outfit yeah she's like <laughs> you can see it in her face like oh my god this has just done some stuff for me really and, okay yeah. i'm gonna have to watch that now so well it- the story is the story is attraction between them early on but they were very young and the director was like don't you dare like don't don't do this we have more than one movie to shoot so <laughs> let's not and they didn't and they went on and dated different people and then in the last couple of years, you start to see them more and more together. They just kept it quiet um, because the creatives behind the scenes did not actually want them to couple. Because you get it. You got two stars of your movie. And if they fall out, what do yeah. you do? If it goes bad, and then you end up with they, the art star TBJ relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Where you're fighting all the time. Nobody yeah. wants that at home. And you're like, please, Aaron, <laughs> stop fighting. Um, so no, they they the director I think knew or was a director or producer early on that there was something there and was like don't do that yeah so no and they didn't which was good but they were also very young then they're adults now obviously um, mm-hmm. who've got a yeah. lot of things under their belts and can figure out navigating things because she dated uh, God was that actor's name I can't remember his so name I like right to now. TBJ um, seems to keep us in the well, I guess Andy did too, but seemed to be in tune with like what's happening pop culture. in their lives. Yeah, in the pop culture, like what's in the zeitgeist. Because how do we know? Like how do how do we like how do you guys even know that they're together? Like how do you know this? Is it TMZ or you is watch it- interviews? Together. They've talked. Okay. Uh oh, oh. Uh, TBJ is frozen. Together now they have PDA, so it's there. Um. And she does say now, like, you know, when she won an award last year, they were like, who's the first person called? She said, my boyfriend. Um, they talk about it now. <laughs> yeah, we lost TBJ for a second. So, but I mean, like, you guys generally, like, you you just, you see it on, T- on like, commercial or uh, Twitter, social media. Twitter, it's everywhere. social media, everywhere. Uh, and she confirmed it. Yeah. They've confirmed it. They've confirmed it. They talk about it. People want to know that stuff, right? In the red carpet. Who are you wearing? Who are you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well they didn't talk about it for a while you would just see him showing up at like her cousin's wedding with her or Ooh. stuff like that well now how would you see that how would you see her him because showing up? paparazzi follow celebrities every damn where they go they can't go take a shit in the restaurant without a paparazzi <laughs> art star takes a shit in the restaurant all the time 
you're with him. We know. But <laughs> no, our star won't shit. So you said, so you said when I'm taking a shit in the restaurant, <laughs> Joe's holding my hand. Yep, I'm trying to coax company. it out. I had a lot of chocolate. I'm just day. helping a friend. I'm just helping a friend. Yeah, codependency at his best. Yeah. Show number two, who's boss? Who does number two work for? <laughs> Joe has in the past held hands with someone else while taking dumps in a public restroom. And the, I only did it because he said, don't be afraid or like <laughs> prove the world that you're not above holding my hand while I'm pooping. Oh, uh, God bless it. All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, no explanation mo- required. M- meanwhile, most of Tomb's workers decide to leave the operation. Now they know Stark is on the trail. Uh, and with most of their Chitari technology gone, Tombs decided to make one final hit, which will set him and a few of his remaining associates up for life. And we all find out it's the it's it's the hit he's been uh, yeah. trying not to do because he knows it's too ridiculous. But it's or, it's Avenger. It's Tony Stark moving Stark Tower. And it's like I didn't even pick it. It took me forever to pick up on. The, oh, that's what they're going to hit. Duh. Uh, he's only happy he's been talking about this move the whole time mm-hmm. uh and, and so then the- there's a point where they're where uh happy hogan is listing contents and there's the name he can't pronounce and just says thor's magic belt yeah thor's belt do you guys know what that i was gonna ask that's, that's what actually that? a, a comic book thing that has uh, as far as like has no other reference in the mcu beyond uh that moment um megging megging yord uh, it's an actual Norse myth thing, an enchanted belt of strength owned by Thor. Wow, Thor's M E G I N G J O R D. That's funny, Megan Yord. Megan, I'm oh, if you look at the Viking spelling, and there's umlauts and shit in it. Umlauts are delicious. <laughs> umlauts uh, are delicious. I always get an extra. Can I get some extra umlauts oh, at Dunkin' Donuts when I go through the drive thru? <laughs> you get umlauts on your omelets? Umlauts. 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 All right, we've got TBJ, let it be noted. What? Go ahead. Next friends was the Hunsick Boys. Number one hit. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be noted that TBJ hates umlauts. <laughs> On the night of the dance, Parker goes to Liz's house to pick her up, only to get the shock of his life when he learns that Liz's father is none other than Tombs the Vulture. Realize Park. that he got the shock of his life, but it wasn't from the shocker. It wasn't from the shocker, so he didn't get two in the pink. Parker only <laughs> just manages to maintain his composure. However, during the car ride to the dance, Tombs learns that Peter went missing. Whenever Spider Man was around and deduces his secret and he recognizes his voice, kind of thing. So I know that voice. When Liz is out of the way, Toombs tells Parker he'll let him live since he saved Liz in Washington, but warns that he'll show no mercy if he continues to interfere with his plans. He's like, I'll kill you if you come between me and my family. During the dance, Parker realizes Toombs is planning to hijack the Stark cargo plane, transporting weaponry from Avengers Tower to the team's new headquarters. Although unsure if he can defeat Tombs without Stark's advanced tech, Parker realizes he cannot abandon his duties, and he leaves the dance. He puts on his old homemade Spider-Man suit. Why are you wearing that stupid suit? The shocker makes fun of him. What's with the stupid outfit? Uh And he races to Tombs' lair to confront him after Ned helps him stick the new shocker to the school bus. (laughs) Uh, And then he gets uncovered being the guy in the chair. (laughs) What are you doing in here? I'm watching poor. <laughs> like you can't come up with a better excuse than that. I love that moment. I love that moment when he says, like, he has to say he's watching poor to cover for Spider Man. <laughs> and that that teacher that caught him, she's also she's in something else. She's from she's from a show. Anybody know what she's from? I can't. I don't remember. I have to look who that is. She's from something. And I kept meaning to look it up, and I haven't. She, I know her from somewhere. Like, I feel like it's like an educational show we watch as kids or something. Or in high school or junior high or something. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, that's that. All right. I got to watch the clip. You're going to watch the clip just to figure out who it is? Yeah. 
or she's Law and Order. Is she from Law and Order or something? No, she's not. She looks kind of like uh, Estepatha Murkison, uh, but is not. I think she was on a math, math show. Square One Television Friday Math something. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't recognize this person, but I know she looks familiar. Uh, maybe it's something I watch with the kids. I'll have to figure it out. I'll we'll figure it out later. Salinas Levia. Leva is her that, name. That's the actor's name? Selena Levia. Yeah, here she yeah. is. Uh, she was on Orange is the New Black. Oh, that's what I know her from. That's that's not an educational you show at all. I did not watch that with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely. Yeah, she is. She is. Uh, there's like a mother and daughter who are both in jail. And she's the mother. That's right. She's really good. She's awesome in that movie, that show. Anyway. Um, where, where are we at? Okay. Parker is first ambushed by Schultz. That's who that's who the new shocker is. Yeah. But defeats him with the help of Ned. He then confronts nice Toomes shot. in the lair. <laughs> like yeah. Ned, Ned does the web. Ned shooter. does the web shooter. It's so funny. Uh, he then confronts Toomes in the lair, who attempts to persuade him to his side. When Parker refuses, Toomes destroys the building's support beams and leaves him to die under the rubble. That was another sad part. Uh, where he's stuck under that rubble and he's got to, I got to be Spider Man. And they have that moment where he looks at the reflection where it's half Spider Face, half his face. Yeah, that we've seen a million times in the comics, right? Around, yeah. We had a that, coloring and, book with that. And we were, yeah. You know, especially in like the, the Daily Bugle or the newspaper strip. They do that all the time. All the time, right? But this moment is built on, oh, I got to remember which issue it is. Uh, there's, a, there's an issue of uh, Amazing Spider Man number 33 where like he's buried under all sorts of rubble and he has to sort of uh, call on his deepest reserves of spider strength to try to come on to spider-man escape it. yeah that was a cool moment uh but he overcomes the self-doubt and escapes before intercepting tombs on board the now damaged plane and steering it towards the beach near coney island and this is the part i was like oh just nervous like up in the plane like anything happens and you're dead like he's just holding on and he's wearing pajamas uh i mean <laughs> and like the falling into the engine a bunch of times almost and uh just nerve-wracking i uh it's just ex- exciting what an exciting movie the whole thing i just can't believe there's all these exciting moments that's marvel for you uh the two engaged in confrontation that ends with parker saving tombs his life from his own unstable equipment and leaving him for the New York City Police Department with that little note saying, hey, found this vulture guy, you know, kind of, you know, it's kind of funny. But that whole thing on the on the beach, steers the plane, it crashes. We see Happy kind of seeing the plane crash behind him when he finally got all that done and then it crashes. Um, and then sometime later, Parker learns that Liz is moving away and Michelle Jones will be replacing her as president of the decathlon team. And after receiving a call from Happy Hogan, Parker was asked to visit the Avengers facility. Uh, and Stark offers Parker an even more advanced suit and an invitation to join the Avengers. And the media is all out there, and he's supposed to unveil them to him. And Parker declines Stark's invitation in favor of remaining a friendly neighborhood Spider Man and wants to go back to being a kid. This is when I was like, no, join the Avengers. No, <laughs> well, he thought it was a he, test. He's still a kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he did the right thing tbj is right he did the right thing but he also thinks it was a test and probably doesn't believe that he was actually about to be an avenger <laughs> but, that's true because so, tony it. so then tony has to cover because pepper comes out and is like what the hell is media here what are you gonna do so he's like you got that ring so he's gonna we assume he's gonna pop the question to pepper yeah in front of the media see it. uh and there was a there was a fun bit like several years later like going with paltrow and i think uh, John Favreau or somebody were on some kind of talk show or cooking show or something and Pep, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow had no idea she was in this movie she thought this was just some other Avengers scene or something <laughs> like, like, I wasn't in Spider-Man what are you talking about like, yes you were <laughs> I mean barely but <laughs> she had no idea so do we think they filmed that then while they're filming other stuff for something else or yeah. we don't know when that was even filmed uh i don't i don't i don't have the shooting schedule I was don't she know. cgi'd in <laughs> no she was in there no, but she, she just didn't know that that, not told. Yeah. that one sequence was in a spider-man movie 
Yeah, because it was probably just a second that she did that. Yeah, it was like like probably four hours of work to do that. She knew she had to come to set that day and film a scene with Tony and Toby and was like, cool, and then left and was like, it'll show up somewhere. At this point, her contract, she knows she's in. She's going to show up. Yeah. So she probably just didn't didn't phase her. All right, TBJ, if you get hired tomorrow as Gwyneth Paltrow's bodyguard, are you taking the job? I don't know. Not I'm sure. Can I do it? Yes. Do I want to leave my home? No. I'm an introvert at heart. What if they say you can be Gwyneth Paltrow's bodyguard, but instead of you going to her place, she's just going to come stay with you? And you protect that her. sounds like a Medea movie in the making. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is she bringing her goop with her? She's bringing her uh, goop and her. Uh, Vagina scented flowers or whatever. There's smell, candles. yeah. There's candles that smell like vaginas. Yeah, this would be an interesting uh, movie. It would be an interesting thought experiment there. I just, do it just for the content. Just see how it goes. That would be a good YouTube yeah. series. Exactly. Chris Paltrow stays with TBJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, where are we at? So, Pop Pepper, yeah, the ring. Upon returning home, Parker discovers that Stark has returned his upgraded suit and he puts it on and looks toward the window. Meanwhile, May is standing behind him the whole time and says, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So can you not, can you tell me what happens without spoiling? Like, is she in the next Spider-Man that she's in on the deal or do they just mind, yeah. mind wipe her, but she yeah. knows about uh, it? I, and no, the, no the, mind wiping. No, she's... <laughs> Does May ever know in the comics, or does she, does she know about Spider Man? Uh, yes and no, uh, depending on what. I mean, there's a long period of time, like hundreds of issues, where he's keeping that secret from her, because and she's always saying oh, she hates Spider Man, thinks he's creepy and weird. Uh, so that's another reason he never says, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Spider Man." Uh, although I think there's a, and I think you know, J. Jonah Jameson publishing stories about how shitty spider-man is probably feeds into that but then there was a revelation they had an issue where you know aunt may was going to die uh during the clone saga and i think she revealed that she always knew she was just trying to discourage him from being from risking his life as Uh, spider-man by doing that saying he sucks but but she wasn't so dumb i do remember that story he noticed him sneaking out of the house all the time (laughs) and (laughs) every day i'm sure we already talked about this but is there a young, beautiful Aunt May in the comics too, as well as the old uh, lady? The Ultimate Comics had a younger version of Aunt May. She was still, you know, silver haired, but she wasn't like uh, an eighty year old grandma like granny. giving you yeah. wheat cakes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I like wheat cakes. Right, so but I, I mean, it, I just remember her looking like like the 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 granny and Sylvester and Tweety. Yeah, and that in the Tobey Maguire movies, <laughs> she was that Aunt May. She was a. Uh, 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 very old. Her and, uh, and Ben were old, and then, older. They and were then in the, and, older and older. Yeah, and then the Andrew Garfield one, uh, she was played by Sally Field. So that was a step. Oh, yeah, she's a little. Uh, and then, um, then they said, "All right, you know, let's go full on." Uh, and and into the Spider Verse is played by Lily Tomlin. That's Aunt May. Oh, really? Yeah, really? That's right. That's right. Man, dropping the knowledge, art star, dropping the trivia. Word up. Boom. While he's dropping deuces. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Okay. And then we have in prison. See, and, that was two. And yeah. he was dropping deuces. So two deuces. That works on many levels. And then in prison, we see that the incarcerated Gargan, uh, who is, you said, is too cold Scorpio, uh, <laughs> Scorpion, uh, approaches tombs inside the prison, explains that several criminals are banding together to exact vengeance against Spider Man. And when pressured by Gargan about Spider-Man's identity, hey, rumor has it, you know who he is. And he denies any knowledge by saying he'd already be dead, If that, which I think is a kind of a badass thing to say. Yeah. Uh, but he, it also like, shows he's kind of protected. At the end, Spider-Man him. kind of saved his life as yep. well. Yeah, so. he knows he saved them. Right? Well, he saved them, important. and then I think there's the fact that we he's a damn child. I think it would be another level of villainry to turn in the name of a child. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't afraid to threaten that level of villainy. No, I'm, I'm going to kill you, you think, and everyone you love. But you can threaten and think, oh, he's a kid, so he'll be scared of that threat. Yeah, That's yeah. 
down a bunch of bad guys. No, it's this guy. Go to this high school. Kill him here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing, though, is Shocker knows who he is, too. And, uh, oh, that's right. But we'll see. That hasn't been followed up on yet. So, so we haven't, we don't see Shocker after he gets stuck to this bus. I don't think so. I think they were, there was a hint that, you know, with Vulture and Scorpion there, and then he also has Shocker and his crew, and he's got the Tinkerer inventing shit for him, that maybe they were they were going to try to gear up for a Sinister Six story. Is that who where, all those guys are? The Sinister well, not Six? necessarily. The Sinister Six, the classic Sinister Six, is uh, Dr. Octopus, uh, Electro, um, Craven the Hunter, uh, the Vulture, uh, Mysterio, and uh, I think Rhino. And oh. they technically and then i think they thought you know the no way home spider-man was gonna bring that's kind of what they did there it's a nod to it it's a nod to it but they don't have the actual it it, they don't have most of those guys in the mcu yet just you Uh, mentioning those names makes me want to go play some marvel snap uh hopefully soon uh this podcast will be sponsored by marvel snap all right I'm, i'm sure they need our exposure they need our help yeah <laughs> anyway there's one uh one other uh post credit scene with captain america doing public service announcements centering on the importance of patience and explaining how patience can be the key to victory but it all, can also lead to something disappointing after waiting so long and then tired he's like how many more of these are gonna do yeah that's uh, the joke of the end credits like you waited for the end credit scene and it's just me and it's disappointing yeah <laughs> it's this yeah. stupid thing yeah uh yeah that was kind of funny yeah, that was a neat way to <laughs> to introduce the cheesier aspect of Captain America. But at least we get to see Chris Evans. Yeah. Everett. Evans. Yeah. Chris Evans. <laughs> Chris, Everett. Say Everett. Chris, Chris Everett. Chris Everett is a tennis player. Yeah. Wow. The are, you hot say, are you saying Chris? The hot. the hot Chris. Is he hotter than Chris Hemsworth? Than Hemsworth? The Hemsworth. And- they each bring their own thing to the table. I'd put them here here i want to gaze at a hidden worth i want to just bask in it but i want to go to dinner with an evan okay, okay. okay. so, so dinner, just dinner for gaze here kill. Kill TBJ, dinner put her gaze. hands about equal yeah. levels yeah, so, yeah. tbj to so already... those who can't see with, through them. so base would, would you be with the three chrises um i'm not touching the other chris at all He's got some. Pratt or Pine? Pratt. Pine. I was talking Pine. Oh. I mean, we can travel. Captain Kirk, Captain America, or Thor. (laughs) I think think we, listen, talk about a new TV show. TBJ and her brother husband. That would be cool. (laughs) And also (laughs) fold in Gwyneth Paltrow living in your closet. That's true. She's visiting and she's staying with me for some reason. We've got gold here. Someone call us. We got some things. We will make this happen, Marvel Universe or yeah. Hollywood or whoever needs a bodyguard slash a woman to be a, a it's a it's a television sister husband in the Joe Brother husbands. There you go. Uh, Brother husbands three Christmas. While we're talking about Hemsworth, do you want to comment on uh Liam Hemsworth uh uh, Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus situation. Not really. What's their situation? You know, they were married. They were young. They fell in love. They broke up. It's got cheating. back together. Got he cheated married. on her fourteen times. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, Allegedly. Lots of stuff that goes down on both sides. Um, and then she is free, free, and now. Um, she has written a song, which I do love the song. So, hell yeah, I got you, Miley. Um, I think Young Hollywood is a is a tricky ass thing, and mm-hmm. they've both been Young Hollywood for a very long time. And I hope they do some growing up individually and work on themselves individually. But you know, Chris has been married for a very long time, and we don't hear that much controversy coming out of him and his wife. Well, here's the thing I heard on TikTok, Andy. You may not have heard, but I'm sure this is so. So he, uh, she, breaking news, breaking news. On their their anniversary, or maybe when they got married or something, he dedicated Bruno Mars's. um, Yes. What's that song? That's her song. Uptown Um, Funk. 
Not up now. I should have bought you flowers that song. And bought and you flowers were... and write your name in the sand or whatever. So her new song she wrote is like a diss to him after he cheated on her with 14 women and was like, I wrote my own That's name in the sand. I buy my own yeah. flowers. I buy my own. Like it was the same lyrics of Bruno Mars, but saying, I don't need you to do that shit for me. I'm a it woman. I like do that her. myself. Wait, it's so like writing your name in the sand. Is that like when you write your name in the snow? When you pee? No. Okay. no. You take a stick and you write your name in oh, the sand. Or a wiener in art. No. Case. <laughs> no. Art writes no. his name in the sand with his wiener. We're not. Oh, going that's, down a, that that's a rough. That's a rough. That's Art a just rough helicopters. Stick. He's helicopters in the sand with his oh, wiener. Oh, God. No. <laughs> Well, we apologize, listeners. On behalf yeah. of, I apologize on behalf of TBJ for that crass comment. <laughs> you should apologize. <laughs> that Spider-Man uh, Homecoming, I think it was a great movie. I can't believe yep. how much action-packed it was. I honestly thought it was going to be over after the elevator scene. I was like, this was an awesome movie after the elevator scene. If that was the climax of everything, holy cow, that was exciting. Great movie. And then I was like, oh, shit, a bunch more awesome, exciting shit. Yeah, this is there's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, yeah, and a lot it, of great stuff and a, a hell of a cast, even mm-hmm. in the smaller bits. Yeah, great. Cast. And I was I was genuinely surprised by the the revelation that uh, Adrian Toomes was Liz's dad because that's that's a departure from the comics. Yeah, but, which uh, is cool. So it can yeah. it can surprise you nerds that know everything too. Yeah, yeah, and 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 not be mad about it. I was like, oh, shit, uh, when he opened the door. Yeah, and that's the exciting thing that they can do that. They can make nerds say that. They can make non-nerds say, oh, shit. I love it. Yeah. And I have a new respect for Zendaya because I only knew her from that Disney show that my daughter watched when she was littler. Really? The girl's been killing the game for a long time now. Is that well, all? I'm, well, I'm new to the – you know, I'm not watching anything because – I'm learning through the nerds. Not, have, have, have you seen her with, in uh, Euphoria? I don't she know what that is. No. I don't know what That's that is. What she, right now, all her awards are coming from Euphoria. What is that, a TV show? or a It's movie? an HBO show where she's yeah. like a, 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 she's a drug addict, addict like, like, high school kid who has high school orgies or something. Whoa. Is what? that right? It's like the right. sinister side of high school. Like it's the high school kids who have a lot of shit on their plates and are just See, she, She's like a daughter to me because I, my I, my daughter watched that show she was on, whatever that show was. Oh, was when she, she was on there with Bell Bella Thorne. Um, I can't remember the which name one. of that. No, she was on there with Bella Thorne, who is they are now both adults actually. I might be getting uh, that mixed up with a different show now that I think about it. No, Ar- Ariana not. Grande was on a show with her. No, that's a no, one. that's not her. That's McGurdy. That's the girl who wrote um, "Glad My Mom Is Dead." Something where that they're in, that. they're in like an art school, and Ariana Grande is the dumb girl. Yeah, that's not even. That's, that's not same Zendaya. show. Zendaya is not on that one. No, she's not. But I know she's on some. Like she was like a superhero or something, right? That's her second. So she did one show That's with Bella Thor early on, and then she did another one. Okay, I know um, from the one where she's a secret super. There's a yeah. family of superheroes or something. They are family. Mm-hmm. She know. appeared in the Disney Channel sitcom Shake It Up from 2010 to 2013 as Rocky That's Blue. Bella Thor. Mm-hmm. I don't think I saw that. She also starred in the 2012 Disney Channel original movie Frenemies. Not that either. Maybe I'm getting her mixed uh, up with something. There's stuff in the Disney Channel reality series Prank Stars. And no, you're not mixing her up. She did play a hero. She was Zoe Stevens in the Disney Channel original movie Zapped, which is hopefully not based on Scott Bayo's. Zapped. Fuck Scott Bayo. Yeah, I what said it. <laughs> That's very hard. Charles and Charles. Scott Bayo's a was... crazy Trump guy now. She portrayed oh, both yeah. the titular character Casey Cooper and Bernice in Casey Undercover from 2015 that's, that's, that's it. Casey Undercover is what Audrey used to watch. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. Kevin, now, first of all, she has always killed the game stylistically, stylistically on red carpet. So, number one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I will um, make no bones about the fact that I am out, completely out of touch with anything that's and out then there. So, I don't. Euphoria know is. Is good, like you don't necessarily like her character necessarily, but she's so good. She's good, she's a great actress. Yeah, I mean, she's killing it, I'm sure. But fantastic, it's just neat to see her 
I can't remember what I was gonna say. Something about you need to see her as an adult. Well, no. as I mean, she's still a kid in this one, but like I have yeah. respect for her now, rather than she's not in some dumb Disney show that I can't wait for my daughter to turn off. Because like you know, <laughs> you know, like hey, Disney launched a mini career. Oh and yeah, we can't get a Marvel contract, Joe. If you keep this and Disney, they all oh, Marvel. Sorry, you Disney. But no, well, that program is not for me. I'm not their target audience for those shows. That's it was my daughter. It was, but being a father, nothing wrong with watching Disney shows, though. No, I'm not saying there is. I just got finished watching uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur on the weekend. No, I'm just saying, like those those shows, like the acting. I mean, it's it's for kids, like Bunked and uh, yeah, Bunked and all that, like the last Villains of Valley, whatever that's called. Yeah, Camp. uh, What's that Camp? Camp Laszlo? I don't know. It's that bunked and all they those did ones. Rock, the Camp Rock series with the Jonas Brothers originally. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. but this, no, but now I like singing Zendaya and stuff like this, which is awesome. And I guess she's going to be in the next one, and I'm probably excited to see that. I, yeah, you should so. be. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. It's time for TBJ uh, to go back to work and Andy uh, to pipe down. Oh, what? I Andy? just want to mention that uh, apparently this is Zapped movie that uh, she was in um, is about she has an app on her phone that that can control the minds of boys. And she's also in love with the G.I. Joe character, Zap. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, she's Frank actually love, But Grunt friend. is in love with her, so it's a whole triangle between Grunt. Zap and Grunt. I wish there was a love for <laughs> Zap and Grunt. <laughs> Turns out oh, Zap boy. and Grunt love each other. All right. But, we all love you. Art Star loves you all. Everybody, we got to go back to work. And don't forget the big contest win one night alone with Heartstar is still going on. <laughs> Are we still pimping him out? Yeah, leave us a five star review. Everybody gives give us a five star review. Gets, gets one night alone with Heartstar. Right. Did we, did we rate this movie or do we need to? Thumbs oh, up. We can't. I mean, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Everybody yeah. give we, one. We, we do not have a consistent rating system. No. We do not. No, we got to figure that out. One give word. F- one four word. umlauts. Everybody give one word to sum it up and how you liked it. I'll amazing. Say, amazing. Fantastic. Our is amazing. Fantastic. Spectacular. Andy. All right. I'll say. Uh, Peter Porter. Prepare you. Say prepare you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> These are all uh, uh, adjectives that have been used for Spider-Man in his comic books. Oh, they are I'll amazing! Just... Spider Man, spectacular Spider Man. Oh, Spider Man was in the Fantastic Four sometimes. Oh, so now I'll you got to in... say uh, Avengers. Web of <laughs> Webby, very <laughs> sticky. Very Webby, done. Very sticky, sexy, sexy. <laughs> I love Ned. All right, All right so the next guys. one is what? Oh, uh, what is the next? Thor Ragnarok, right? I oh hope, yeah, I hope that's right because I've been watching it. I think I that's right. Yeah, I believe that's right. Let me, uh, I'll, I will confirm because Art Star's been saying search. Ragnarok, you're gonna love Ragnarok, blah blah you blah. blah, blah awesome blue. Thor, I think we've all Hulk, said Ragnarok. I love that's Ragnarok. Thor yeah. Hulk, uh, dynamic. Yep, we've got you know, Thor Ragnarok, Black Batman Panther, Robin thing. <laughs> yeah, hey. Hulk, he and Hulk yeah. get into it, right? That's yeah, awesome. it's a Hulk, Thor Hulk buddy movie, kind of. Pretty much, I, I did watch it once, I... my first initial. You know, through where I barely pay attention because the ADD kicks in. Well, go back and Gold watch it. Is, is I'm going to watch a couple more it. times. Yep. Thor yeah. Ragnarok yeah. is is like when they finally decide to just have a lot of fun with the Thor mythos instead of like the previous two yeah. movies were a bit, bit too turgid. Like uh, someday I would love to do a, <sighs> a recording of a watch through where we watch it and talk live about it together. We like. Yeah, we can figure that out. Set aside time sometime for that. Which is why we need the people to like, subscribe, and listen so that we can build up free time and we can actually sit down together and make it happen. Make it happen. Make it last. Maybe get back in the studio all in the same room. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. Sing us out, Art. Make it last forever. And ever. And later, nerds. And ever. Rap about the president no more But evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor Still more incarceration of my kids by the prisons And people thinking this election to end it racism 
proud of a pessimist, I'm glad to see Obama But don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems Mr. Officer, now they POTUS look like me You don't think again when seeing brothers rolling down the street Every Martin Luther King on his American dream Still a Rodney being beaten, screaming fuck the police Me, I'm running through the pasture, trying to get away from master But the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster Can't pass for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers From the plantation saying I graduated Congratulations, cool beans, but to most school me Trying to dodge STDs, living off government cheese Trust the government, please, not even if it was me Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander-in-Chief Trying to give us us free, but there's a nigga in my ear saying You got it super, man, you oughta keep it here Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting Raps come to Kente without the half-stepping A new chapter, back with new lessons After that, the final exam, any questions? QueenCityPodcastNetwork.com.